Bonjour, Kinemagin in Ireland and Dishnikas, and welcome to this production of the My Math Network. Today's episode, Chapter 6, Lesson 10, Hands On, Divide Decimals. Our essential question is how is multiplying and dividing decimals similar to multiplying and dividing whole numbers? As a gentle reminder, the math part is the same. It's just now wondering where do you put your decimal? Before moving forward in this video, you should have the packet from page 437 available to you. If you need to pause the video to do that, feel free to go ahead and do that now. Welcome back to those who had to go grab their packets and thank you for the rest of you for your patience. We're gonna go ahead and move into the book on page 437. The expectation is that you will uh, follow along and write in here when I write in there. That way you have a resource available to you when you go ahead to do the assignment and or prepare for an assessment. So we have a build it and we have our friends the base 10 blocks. Uh, you can use your own drawings of these. I use squares, long pieces, and then little dots to represent hundreds. So we have in this model three holes, one, two, and three. And then we have six tenths, one, two, three, four, five, six. And we're going to divide them into three groups. Now, this is one of the ones where we don't have to do a lot in the way of regrouping. So that's a benefit. In our step one, the model shows 3.6 or 3 and 6 tenths using three holes and 6 tenths. Divide the blocks into three equal groups. Draw a model that represents the group. So let's remember here that we have the 3 and the 6. And we're going to go ahead and go into that part. So let's draw my groups. So I'm going to put one hole here. I'm going to put another one here. And I'm going to put a third one there. And then I have six of these. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. So now in each group, there's one hole and two tenths. Go ahead and fill that in. And you probably should draw your model there just so you have that as a reference. I'll give you a moment to do that. And as you do this, just remember anytime that we move a little too fast for you, you're welcome to pause the video complete what you're writing down and then unpause the video to continue. That way you can control the speed and you don't end up stressed out. Give me about another 15 seconds on this part before we continue on down the page. I'm 437. I'm gonna go ahead and clear the drawings. Let's go on to the next page here. So we had one hole and two tenths. And remember, anytime you go between the whole numbers and the decimals, you need a decimal point. And I can check my work. So I'm going to put 1.2. You see the decimal point there. And now I multiply. And you're saying, well, Mr. Aaron, I thought we were dividing. You're right. But when you check your work on division, you should use the inverse operation, which means the opposite operation, and the opposite or inverse of division is multiplication, just like addition and subtraction or inverse operations. So I'll go ahead and I'll do my math here. Three times two is six. Three times one is three. They've got a decimal point, one spot after the decimal, and they do have that correct. So we ended up with 3.6. 3.6 3 is the original dividend. So we know we did this right. Go ahead and fill in those couple numbers. And then we'll be moving to the top of page 438 in your book or slash packet. About five more seconds. And anytime you see me or hear me say, I'm going to go clear the drawing. That's a good spot to pause if you're not ready. Let me go ahead and clear the drawings. I'm 
Let me see the answer key there. So let's try another one here. This is the top of page 438. We're going to divide 4.8 divided by 2 using these models. We can get just a fit just right. Here we go. So the model shows four and eight tenths using four holes, Bejic, Niche, Nisue, and Niwin, and eight tenths. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to put them into two groups and I'm going to draw them out for you and you should draw them as we go as well. You may already have a good spot where to go. So here's one for group one, one for group two. I know that looked more like a rectangle, but you know, you get the idea. It's math, not art. <laughs> All right, so now I've got my four holes. Now I'm going to go to my eight tenths. Bejic, Niche, Sway, Niwin, Nanin, Gudwa Sway, Nijwa Sway, Nishwa Sway. So in each group, so now I'm going to look at one of my groups. There are two holes and there are four tenths. Worst penmanship ever, but it's still two and four tenths. So go ahead and draw this in. And I'll give you about 45 seconds to do that. I'm going to go ahead and clear the drawings. Let's check our answer keys here. Yep, two whole and four tenths. So we did pretty good. And now we go ahead and we check our work. And two whole and four tenths would be written as 2.4. We go ahead and we'll check that here by putting in 2.4 times 2. 4 times 2 is 8. 2 times 2 is 4. There's one decimal spot, so it's 1. You see the decimal, 4.8. That was our original dividend, so we know we did well. So we'll go ahead and write those in. I'll give you about 15 or 20 seconds, and then we'll move on to the next slide here, which will be the talk about it still located on 438. All right, I'm going to go ahead and clear the drawings. And now let's talk about, study the table. Write a rule you can use to find the quotient of a decimal and a whole number without using models. Well, very similar to what we did with multiplication, you can start seeing that 36 divided by three is 12. 36 divided by three is 12. Oh, wait a minute, there's one decimal spot. We had one decimal spot. 4.8 divided by two is 2.4 is the same as 48 divided by two equals 24. Just include the decimal spots. 2.4 divided by 4 is 0 0.6, just like 24 divided by 4 is 6. Let's see what the book gave us. Remove the decimal point, divide as with whole numbers, and then place the decimal point in the quotient. So now what we're hopefully seeing is that the math portion of division does not change. And we'll keep learning as we get more details on that decimal point here this week. All right, justify conclusions. Use your rule from exercise one, that's what we just talked about, to find 3.5 divided by seven without using models. Explain the process. Well, I could actually use the standard algorithm. There's seven going into 3.5, put my decimal point up here. Seven does not go into three, but it does go into 35 five times. Five times seven is 35. I subtract. At this point, I'm no longer worried about the decimal. It's only when it goes up right above it. And we end up with an answer of 0 0.5. If I want to put that in there to help remember what the value is so you don't accidentally say a five, that's okay. Um, but it's not required probably still advised at this level. Once you get comfortable, maybe not such a big deal. So I used my exact same process as if dividing 35 by seven, I just made sure my decimal point lined up and that's where I put it. 
All right, I'm gonna go ahead and clear the drawing. And let's do some practice. I want you to do a model here. Do both numbers three and four. What I'm gonna ask you to do is to pause the video, do numbers three and four, unpause the video and check your answer. You may go ahead and pause the video now. Welcome back, let's see how you did. So you see the groups here? We had originally would have had three whole ones and four small or four tenths, but we can't do three divided by two equally. So we took those one of the whole ones and we split it up into 10. So we put an additional five in each column. So the first five in each of these would kind of go towards the whole one missing. And so you end up with one whole and seven tenths. This is one of those examples where regrouping is necessary. Now here it's not as necessary or it's not necessary because six is divisible evenly by three. So I went one, two, three, four, five, and six, and then the three tenths, basic niche in this way, and give me 2.1. All right, numbers five and six will require some regrouping as well. So go ahead and try those. And you may pause the video now. We'll see you on the other side. Welcome back. Let's check our answers. So 5.6 divided by four. So we had one, two, three, and four. We're good to go. But I had a whole one left over, and the whole one again is 10 tenths. So 10 tenths plus six tenths gave me 16 tenths. And then I put them out in each group. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. Once I've divided out, there's one whole and four tenths in each group. Down here, 2.7 divided by three. Three is larger than two, so that's all gonna be broken up. And so two groups of 10 is 20 plus seven is 27. So now we're gonna take those 27 and put them in each group. So one, two, and three, four, five, and six, until you get all the way to 27. And you'll find out that there are nine in each group. There is no whole one here, so nothing looking like that. But there are nine tenths in there, so your answer is zero. Point nine. Let's move ahead to number nine. We want to look at this one together as a group, um, at least for conversational pieces. This is the one that has an error. Find Joseph used base 10 bucks to find 2.1 divided by 3. Stated that 2.1 divided by 3 was 0 0.6. Find his mistake. You can see that he has 6 in each one. So what did he, what do you think he did wrong? Well, when we break this down, how many tens or how many tenths are in a whole? Well, 10, 10 times two is 20 plus one is 21. He should have had 21 in there. Instead, somehow he had 18. Let's see what the book had to say. Yeah. And that's where we get the answer. There was a, a math issue. All right, so now it is time for you to do the assignment. Now there are two ways to do this. You could complete it on this page, put your name on the top of this side, the top of that, take a picture or scan it, email it to mireland at psychchipschool.net or text it to me at 989-750-1640. Or you could keep these paper, do it on here, which I want you to do, type the answers in the Google form, and then you can bring the paper at the next point that you sit in or in class or at the next paper exchange. Um, I understand that to get quicker feedback, it would be good to have the answers at least in the Google form, even if you are going to bring the papers back in a, in a few days when you're in person. So as you look at the assignment, always look on the homework helper. It's a good quick reminder before you get started. Uh, this, these two use the models to find each quotient, draw the groups, and yes, you should draw the groups. Three here, draw models, and you can put the models right along there. Four says draw models. 
five draw models, six draw models. So you really should have models all over the place here. Um, whether you put it off to the side or right under, that's going to be kind of a you decision. But it's necessary because that's really what we're building off of. If you have questions about the material, please reach out to me at mireland at psychchipschool.net and we'll see where we can help you. The best way to get this instruction is in class during our live stream or in person. And I hope you all have a mental gizigad. Minwa, mama pee.